Okay, well, the Toronto Maple Leafs hit free agency and they didn't do what other teams did. You know, they didn't sign a goalie to a big long term contract, they didn't land one of those big free agents. However, they filled some holes, they left some cap space to make moves later on, and overall, not too bad, not too bad. Today, what we're going to do is we're going to go over the Toronto Maple Leafs 2021 free agent signings. Uh, we'll go over, I think there was a little trade in there, and they um, and just go over uh, what, uh, what came of everything, uh, where former Leafs have gone, and we will check out who the Leafs have welcomed. So first, let's just look at the people who did uh, move on and or were signed by the Leafs. For example, you got Zach Hyman here. Age 29, UFA, goes from Toronto to Edmonton, seven years, $5.5 million per. Um, Edmonton wanted that eighth year, but only offered Toronto a sixth. Dubas would not, and I repeat, would not budge. He wanted a second, and do I, I, I commend him for it because I think it's worth a second. He would have saved Holland and the Edmonton Oilers $400,000 per year. Yeah, that's worth, that's worth a, a second for sure. Peter Morazic gets signed by Toronto. Three years, 3.8 million. Good thing about Peter Morazic, he has decent numbers. He's been a tandem goalie before and he'll be a tandem goalie again here in Toronto with Jack Campbell. I expect it to be like a 60-40 split with Jack Campbell. Jack Campbell taking the 60. Um, but if you can have two goalies, I think Campbell's at around, I think 1.6 million. Morazic at 3.8. I'll take that for my goalie tandem. I think it'll work. Mrazic's played it before, and yeah, he's, he's a good little backup there with Jack Campbell, or a 1B to Jack Campbell's 1A. Frederick Anderson, on the other hand, he swaps, and he goes to Carolina two years at $4.5 million. Um, Toronto wasn't going to go over $4 million, I don't think, and that's why Freddie Anderson moved on. He only gets a two-year deal here. Uh, Carolina signs him, obviously, because they couldn't sign Bernier, and Bernier was signed for two years at, what, 4.125 or something? Uh, insane. I still don't understand Carolina's thinking. Uh, they lost all three of their goalies, Mrazek, Reimer, and Najalkovic. I don't understand why they're trading Najalkovic. Surely they could have got him less than what they did with Freddie Anderson here. Uh, Nick Foligno, he basically kicked Toronto in the nuts and said, you wasted a first rounder on me, and I'm going to go sign with Boston for two years at $3.8 million. Wow. Boston, they had a good free agency. Him, I think they got Halla. Uh, obviously, they got Taylor Hall. They signed Allmark to the four years at $5 million per. Obviously, Toronto would have liked that, but $5 million was just a little bit too steep for them. They do have $3.5 million left in cap space to find that 3C, that third-line center, because it looks like, from what Dubas has been saying, that Alexander Kerfoot will be moving to the left wing. Um, David Kampf comes in, 26 years old, from Chicago, two years at $1.5 million. And when everyone looks at his analytics, his war, they might not be too happy. However, from reading through Twitter, Chicago fans loved this guy. Uh, apparently, he's, he's just a great person, uh, works his ass off. He's a centerman. He wins draws. Taze wasn't there last year. Kampf was their main guy. And he penalty kills. A center, can play fourth line minutes, maybe bump up to third line. He didn't have a great year uh, statistically last year. However, um, if you can penalty kill... If you can uh, win face-offs and you can give the top line, the top centerman, a little bit of break here and there in the games, all right. Uh, I can't wait to see what he brings. And I think they were saying he's good over an 82-game season, 10 goals, and obviously he's going to be penalty killer. He's going to have a pure penalty killer who's a centerman that the Leafs have been desperately trying to find. Uh, Zach Bogosian, he goes back to Tampa Bay for three years at $850,000. Does this guy want money? No. He wants more Stanley Cups. You go to Tampa Bay, and somehow Tampa Bay does it again. They're going to do the same thing they did last year. This year, they get Seabrook, and their LTIR is going to be great. And then they go and they sign Bogosian to just over league minimum. They get Brian Elliott to back up. Tampa Bay is back at it again. Um, Leafs then sign Michael Bunting as well. Two years, 950000 uh, 26 years old. He had an okay year in Arizona. And at 950000 this is a uh, show me what you got. Let's see if you can make the team. Um, excited to see what he can do. And 
it's just more depth piece for the Leafs. Uh, David Riddick, who uh, Toronto traded a third for as backup for the playoffs that they only lasted one round. 1.25 million to the Nashville Predators. All right, Nashville obviously Rene is gone, so they got their backup there in Riddick, who will play behind Saros. Then Toronto signs uh, Carl Darstrom and Alex Biega, both to one year, two way contracts, hundred fifty thousand dollars, both with NHL experience, um, who who can get called up and in if needed, expect to be in the AHL. Uh, they also signed Curtis Gabriel from San Jose, and he's only $750,000. And if everyone remembers Curtis Gabriel, I think it was one time last uh, season, he was just skating around at warm-ups, just eyeing up who he's going to fight, because uh, that's what he does. Yeah, he plays a minute or two, maybe four minutes a game, uh, fights, uh, but he's big on charity. Uh, he's, he's, what you see on the ice is different than what you see uh, off the ice. And it's someone, you know, Toronto will take into their lineup when called upon, when needed. A uh, little bit more grit there. But then also off the ice with all the charity work Toronto does, he just fits in right away. Um, Michael Amadio, he signs $750,000, 25-year-old center. Again, just in the depth piece that can come in if need be. And Nicholas Patan, he goes on his way. And he's off to Vancouver, one year, $750,000. Oh, and before I go, let's not forget, Toronto also signed Josh Hosang to a PTO. That means, you know, Hosang's not on the Leafs. He's going to go to camp. He's going to train uh, and basically try out for free. And then he might get a contract from the Leafs. He might get a contract from any other NHL team, maybe a team from overseas sees him or the AHL. He could sign an AHL deal. But yeah, he's gone a PTO for the Leafs. And I hope, hope something comes of it. If you look at his Elite Prospects page, you know, he hasn't had the, the best career. Um, AHL numbers are good. Uh, last season, 3.6 games um, for San Antonio, 10 and 16 for Bridgeport. He had 43 and 56 in 2018, 2019, but he hasn't seen much time in the NHL. Maybe he cracks the Leafs lineup. Maybe he pulls a Galchenyuk. Um, like I said, it, it doesn't hurt if he shows up and plays and Let's just see what he can do. Why not? No no pressure at all. Leafs don't need to sign him. Some other team might pick him up. But maybe it's a, it's a kick in the butt for the man. And uh, who knows? He could be a fit for the Toronto Maple Leafs. And the Leafs also traded for Brennan Menel um, from Minnesota for a conditional seventh. Basically, it's a condition. Minnesota gets a seventh rounder if Toronto uh, plays Menel for a 30 games in the NHL this season. Overall, uh, right-handed defenseman who hasn't had a shot really in Minnesota. He's played five games. He had a decent uh, junior career in the WHL. He did all right in the AHL. Uh, last season, he played in, with Dynamo Minsk in the KHL, and I think he was third in points on the team. Um, second by only one point, 38 points in 47 games. And then he had seven points in five games of the playoffs. I think it'll be a, a cheaper signing. He's an RFA for Dubas, but a good little move there. And it's another right-handed defenseman. So why not take him in? So overall, how do I feel about the Leafs and their, their signings and their moves? I don't mind them. I actually like them. Um, Camp really had me a head scratch there at 1.5 million. But again, I scroll through Twitter and what he brings is is he's not going to score a lot of goals but he's going to win you face offs he's going to penalty kill and um, it's something Toronto desperately needs uh, Mrazek fits right into what they they need for Jack Campbell again because he hasn't played a full season so why not there they make the move for Menel which I think is or Menel I think it's a, a great little move there and they picked up some depth guys um, no no big signings there but Toronto couldn't do it because they don't have the cap space however Dubis does have $3.5 million to play with. Maybe there's some trades in there. I don't think Kerfoot's going to get traded. Uh, from the sound of it, he's going to play the wing. Um, and you know what? You could have lines up where it's like Matthews, Marner, Robertson, and you could have someone like Kerfoot, Tavares, Nylander. You never know. That's just me spitballing here. Um, but I think they'll fill in, fill the rest from within, depth players as well, um, and they'll look for that third line center uh, because they found their fourth line center. Uh, Spezza will probably be playing the wing. Um, yeah, that's what Toronto's done so far. 
Dubis isn't done. He isn't done. Uh, maybe with these D signings, um, maybe someone like Dermot does move on or Lily Grin. They just have run its course with him and he moves on as well. But there you go. There's my thoughts on the Leafs. I don't mind what they've done so far and I'm excited to see what Dubas has planned for the future. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Hope you liked the video. If you do, click like. If you didn't, hit dislike. Uh, please feel free to subscribe. Take care. Check out my other videos. Have a good one, everyone.